So we're taking a look at the Heliamphora collection over at Carnivora right now. And Heliamphora can really be a challenge to grow, especially if you live in a, a warm uh, environment. Um, because they uh, really want uh, to stay cool, but at the same time get a lot of bright light. Um, so we have them under our floor wave uh, LEDs, and um, they get about 600 ppfd underneath uh, these benches here. Um, and uh, you can see uh, some of these awesome species uh, that can be really a challenging um, species to grow unless you have the right environment. So this is Heliamphora McDonnellae. Um, we've got uh, Heliamphora minor of Arpolosa. This is clone one from Andreas Westuba. Uh, that's uh, Eonaceae sea grown. Another sea grown Eonaceae there. Um, I think this one is uh, Micah Shan's clone two. Um, another McDonnellae. Uh, Parva, that one's uh, Cerro Neblina, I believe. Um, this one right here is Avispa. This is a cool hybrid. I really love this guy just because of the lids. This is Parva crossed with Cersenoides. Another clone. Aquapon and Godzilla over there. We got a whole bunch, a bunch more back there. Um, and so. I do have a confession to make. Whenever I moved to Texas, I had a really hard time transitioning the collection over. Um, they um, they just seemed to want um, a lot of light, but um, cooler temps. So uh, I'd cut down the light in the greenhouse, but they seemed to suffer then. Um, you know, but then if you increase the light, then you, it's more heat. So it's just a, it was a, a very delicate balancing act, um, and um, I, I lost some plants. Um, but whenever I got these four wave LEDs in and started testing them, they just exploded with growth. They really like it, you know, and, and even some of the most challenging species like this Felicciata right here um, seem to just grow really robustly. Look at that plant. So check these out. Um, yeah, the, the P85 um, models are the ones that I recommend for these guys.